All right, so here's a problem in which a puck is being shot at a goalie, and we're given that it's being shot at with some velocity, 65 meters per second, in some positive direction. And then we're told that one of two things happen. Either the goalie stops it with his glove, or he shoots it back with his stick um, at a velocity of minus 65 meter per second, so it's exactly the opposite direction as the direction it was coming in. And of course, if he stops it with his glove, then the final velocity is zero. And we're asked if the time it takes for him to stop it is five milliseconds or 0.005 seconds, or the time it makes contact with the stick is the same amount of time, then calculate the force being exerted by the puck on the glove or by the puck on the stick. Uh, we want the magnitude and the direction of the force. So what I'm thinking here is that because I need the force and I know the velocities and in fact I'm also given the mass of the puck which is 170 grams then I know the momentum of the puck initially and I could tell the momentum of the puck at the end in both cases and if I'm given the time then I think I can calculate the force. And what I'm talking about here is um, this trifecta of the impulse, the momentum, and the relationship between them. Here's what I'm talking about. If I know the mass and the velocity, that means I know the momentum. So that means I know the momentum at the beginning and I know the momentum at the end for both cases. And if I know the momentum at the beginning and the momentum at the end, that means I know the change in momentum. And I know by the impulse momentum theorem that the change in momentum is going to be equal to the impulse of external forces. And if I know the impulse of an external force, then by the definition of impulse, I can relate that to the average force if I know the time of action, which I do. So that's the plan. Calculate the difference in momentum from beginning to end and divide by the time. So let me write that out theoretically first and then we're going to apply it to the numbers that we know have in this problem. So first of all I'm going to say that the impulse which I know is equal to the average force multiplied by the change in time I know that impulse is also equal to the change in momentum which is equal to the final momentum minus the initial momentum. And from this, I can figure out then that the average force is going to be equal to the change in momentum divided by the change in time. The change in momentum, of course, is equal to the momentum final minus the momentum initial over the change in time. And the momentum, I know, is mass times velocity. And the mass hasn't changed, so I can take the mass in common, and I say that's the change in velocity. So that is in general. Now let me apply it to the two situations that I have. In the first situation, I know that the initial velocity was 65 meters per second. I know that the final velocity was zero because the puck stops. I know the change in time and I know the mass. So I should be able to calculate the force. The average force then is going to be equal to the mass, 0.17 kilograms, multiplied by the difference in velocities between the final minus the initial. divided by the change in time. 
So if you work that out, you find that this is equal to 2.21 kilonewtons or 2,210 newtons, which is 2.21 kilonewtons. And the direction is negative. In this case, should have left some room for the negative sign. But the direction in this case is negative, but you gotta remember what I'm calculating here is the, the change in momentum of the puck. So that's the external forces acting on the puck is gonna be negative. If I'm given that this is the positive direction, then the direction of the average force on the puck is gonna be negative. So it's gonna be in the opposite direction. But if I want the force that the puck acts on the glove, because now the glove is going to push the puck this way, that means that the puck is going to push the glove the other way. So this is the direction of force of puck on glove because I've calculated that the glove acts with this force on the puck, that means that by Newton's third law, the direction of the force of the puck on the glove is in the same direction as the, that the puck was traveling in the beginning, and the magnitude is the same magnitude, which is 2.21 kilonewtons. So now I'm gonna do the same thing for part B. But instead, the only thing that is different now is that the final velocity is different. So I'm going to do that again. I'm going to say that the average velocity, in, the average force in this case is equal to the mass multiplied by the difference in velocity, final minus initial. The final is minus 65 meters per second. The initial is 65 meters per second, but there's a minus sign here, and it's 65 meters per second and it's divided by 0 0.005. So this is minus 65 minus 65, that's double what it was, so I know it's gonna be double this one. So it's 4.42 kilonewtons. And again, this is the force on the puck. Because I'm calculating the change of momentum of the puck. The puck is the system of consideration here, so I'm calculating the change in momentum of the puck, which makes that the average external force on the puck. And if I want the force that the puck acts on the stick, it will be in the opposite direction and in the same magnitude. So this is on the puck, and this would be by puck on goalie stick. And of course, they have the same magnitude by Newton's third law.